Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk, with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello, and welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. Connie and I, visiting with us today, is a gentleman from the state, Greg White, Gregory White, Chief of Staff and General Counsel of the Office of Consumer Affairs and Business Regulations. I wanted to get that title right. Well, you did very, very well. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're delighted to have you. Well, thank you. It's nice to be on the show. And to have an opportunity to learn from you a more about what's going on in your office sure. and what your big concerns are, which is what you're sharing with us today. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Um, the Office of Consumer Affairs and Business Regulation is a state agency, and a lot of people, when they hear consumer affairs, automatically think of the Attorney General's office. Mm -hmm. um, that is a big part of what the Attorney General's office uh, is involved in. They have the Consumer Protection Bureau, but we're a separate entity. Right. and. Um, uh, we oversee a number of agencies as well as having our own programs and mandates um, and as such we we like to uh, refer to the Attorney General's office as the enforcer okay. and we're the regulator mm -hmm. and so we have five agencies under under our umbrella if you will we have uh, the division of banks which regulate regulates yep. state chartered banks and credit mm -hmm. unions uh, we in, in addition to uh, mortgage uh, loan companies right. as well as debt collectors and most right, okay. people don't know that the division of banks uh, regulates these folks okay um, in addition to that we have the division of insurance the division right. of insurance uh, regulates um, property insurance mm -hmm. auto insurance uh, health care insurance amongst other things. So regulates these providers of these services and exactly. making sure they're doing what they're doing for the consumer. Exactly okay. and they have a consumer protection line so if people have been aggrieved by the process, they can reach out to them and they try to, mm -hmm. to, to help resolve the issues. Uh, we have the Division of Standards, and I'll talk more about their role, but they're basically involved um, in inspecting fuel pumps and fuel delivery trucks. So if you go to a gas station, weights and measures, mm -hmm. weights and weights measures, measures. you'll yes. see the thing. And uh -huh. uh, yeah. many of the towns have their own inspectors, but uh, we um, oversee the state and so mm -hmm. they'll they'll go to gas pumps um, on a periodic basis and they'll make sure that what is being advertised is in fact going into your uh, into your vehicle S so the, not only the amount of fuel you're getting but also the price that it says the price yeah so exactly. it's between so did you get a real gallon or did you get right three-fourths of right a gallon? exactly what about and what about heating oil and all that do you have weights do, and uh, measures for he all that heating oil they'll mm -hmm. go uh, you know they'll stop fuel delivery trucks and measure to make yeah. sure that you know again that accurate. It, it's not accurate. water in the tank or whatever yeah. <laughs> well, well, or you know <laughs> or that it's uh, you know it's that the gauge is right we oh, just yeah. did a inspection involving the city of Boston at Logan Airport when you go and you you, your, your bag is over a certain weight and all of a sudden the airline wants to charge Did you an additional you amount. Yeah. Uh, we want to make sure that that scale is accurate. Oh, okay, and, excellent. Uh, so and hitting all the different all, measures and deal, weights. <laughs> dealing with weights and measures, uh, price scanners, um, at um, at uh, supermarkets, yeah, okay. and, and often they sc scan an old price, even though the address, yep. Yep. you know, the the the. Well, you guys are doing a good job because we don't find too yeah. many errors. Well, yeah, in that, they're you know? they're they're out there. Mm -hmm. um, auctioneers, uh, auto body shops, they they register those and license oh, those. Very cool. um, so they're very involved in that. Then we have the division of professional licensure, which licenses 375,000 tradespeople from mm -hmm. chiropractors to psychologists, sh social workers, veterinarians, CPA. CPAs, <laughs> there you go, um, electricians, um, mm -hmm. cosmetologists, mm -hmm. and uh, they will license them. They will also oversee a complaint process. They have boards, okay. they have board counsel, um, and we're right now going through uh, what we call e-licensing, which mm -hmm. is going to basically allow for uh, folks within the industry to renew their uh, license uh, online oh, excellent. Um, oh, that's fine. or mm -hmm. um, obtain their license. Yeah. So okay. we're doing a lot with that. And then finally we have uh, the Department of Telecommunications and Cable, okay. which regulates the telecommunications and cable industry. Mm. Um, so those are the five agencies <laughs> under our umbrella. Sure. <laughs> 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 Not to worry. Apologies. <laughs> um, 
Um, so, Interesting. Yeah. So the, the, the area that you decided to come out and talk with us about kind of real specifically is around kind of this sort of identity theft. Identity con theft concerns and, and issues. as well as um, some of the scams that are going on. Yeah. But if, if I could just mention Please. a moment some of the programs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, of yeah, course, so of course. But so we oversee these agencies, but in addition, we have our own mandates. We uh, oversee the um, Lemon Law arbitration process, yep. oh, okay. so if you've been aggrieved by that. The uh, data breach, um, so if uh, an entity has had their data breach, and we'll talk more about identity sure. theft in a moment, uh, they're required to notify us, as well as the Attorney General's office, to notify if mass residents have been involved, the nature of the breach, how many residents were impacted, mm -hmm. and what they've done to rectify that. Like oh, the right. recent okay. Target scandal. Or yes, TJX, years ago, TJX. exactly, yep. TJX yep. Yeah. and yes. whatnot. Mm -hmm. And we just um, provided uh, a mechanism where they could uh, email it to us, and mm -hmm. um, that's really helped the entity because, as again, I keep saying this, but as I mentioned in a moment, they it's not a matter of whether or not your uh, information is going to be compromised mm -hmm. or yours or mine. That's inevitable. It okay. will be. It's just when and how many times, you know. What? How to control it. Yeah. And how to control oh, it. You're scary. Yeah, me. no, <laughs> it's, it's, but common sense dictates and, it, you know, um, that's what we tell consumers. But mm -hmm. so in addition to those programs, we have the do not call list and mm. we have the home improvement contracting program, which sure. is an important part of what we do. Sure. We register all home improvement contractors for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Right now we have uh, 26,000 registered contractors mm -hmm. and um, the program consists of a complaint process and a registration process as well as the guaranteed fund. A lot of homeowners aren't familiar with it. We're working now with the town building inspectors and they're uh -huh. doing a phenomenal job. They are not allowing any contractor to pull a permit without the proper registration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what it does is every uh, two years you're required to register, you pay a fee, and then you pay a one-time fee into the guaranteed fund. What the guaranteed fund does is it, it gives a level of protection to the consumer. So if you have your uh, kitchen redone and you're involved with an unscrupulous contractor, mm -hmm. and let me, let me say for the most part, Contractors that we see are doing a phenomenal sure. job. Yeah, yeah. They're professional. They they take pride in their work. But like in any profession, you there's get some bad, some bad apples. apples. And mm -hmm. when the economy goes uh, starts to go downhill, everyone gets involved in mm -hmm. it uh, for the most part. And so, um, what happens is if you uh, contract with a registered contractor, and if during the process you're grieved by uh, uh, that person, that group, you know, or whatever. either they've mm -hmm. taken the money and not done the work, work or yep. done oh, shoddy yeah. work. Mm -hmm. uh, provided you meet the criteria, you can file with the trust fund, and they can you can recoup up to ten thousand dollars. Wow! They have to be registered. Right. It has to be a written contract. Mm -hmm. The registration number has to be on it. So good advice for folks. They, they should double check to see if the contractor they're choosing is in fact registered. Is in fact registered, and mm -hmm. and what then some you have recourse. Yeah. You yeah. have recourse, and, what and you can do that by reaching out to your office you or online. You can reach or out to our office. We have a website. You can go online. We to just find that particular exactly, and okay. we also have um, we have um, a, a list of unscrupulous contractors, people. Oh, the Ooh, do not do use not list. list. <laughs> the do not exactly. Use. Yes, okay. You know, uh, okay. Or, you know, oh, just let... This person just at all costs. Not so much do not use, but <laughs> be, you know, when in doubt, you know. I used uh, to be in the temporary help business, and we used to ha put that on, you know, certain employees that were just not great. We're right. D-N-U. Yeah, That's right. what I'm seeing in my head. So, you know, <laughs> um, you know, and when you think about it, your home is probably your biggest asset that you, sure. know, you have. Yeah. And you can't have any work done in your home without spending, you know, thousands right. of dollars. <laughs> it starts so, at a, a thousand. Just right, peel exactly. them back or figure out. And out. given what <laughs> some of the winters we've had. Oh, not, my goodness. Not yeah. this past year, but the year before. Oh. I had uh, repairs, insurance reimbursed, repairs yeah. Yeah. needed because of, of the, minor, the minor yep. ice dams yep. and right. gutters and yep stuff yep. you know mine were minor too. right and yours fortunately were covered by uh, insurance, insurance. Uh, yeah. but if you have your kitchen done or bathroom done right. or whatever you're doing it just out of pocket and what we tell m the consumers is for the most part pretty much all the work that you have done in your home with the exception of a few areas um, interior painting you're not required to have a registration okay um, exterior painting 
you are required to have oh, a registration. Awesome. Most people don't know. My wife and I recently had our house painted, and I contacted a half a dozen. Some of them had been in business 20, 25 years, um, were, had great references, and none of them were registered. So and I don't, okay. and, and I don't mm -hmm. think it was because they're they trying were to trying get to avoid it. They just right. weren't aware of it. Yeah. So right. See, yeah. we're, okay. we're doing a public yeah. awareness campaign and letting not only consumers but contractors know about their mm -hmm. responsibility. Is it expensive to register? No, it's it's a hundred and fifty dollars um, for the for first uh, registration, okay. and then a hundred dollars every other year. You pay up to between 100 and 500 into the guaranteed fund, depending upon how many employees you have. This but size. that's a one-time right. yeah. you know. And you're on this list of trusted resources. Yeah, I mean, mm. you're registered. In, 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 and I will say that it doesn't guarantee no. the quality of work because okay. it doesn't require any type of training and schooling. Okay. Uh, the Department of Public Safety oversees the CSL licensing process, which does require classroom and, right. and training. Um, but this guarantees um, that you have a fallback uh, by way of the guaranteed fund if you're aggrieved by the process. Gotcha. So um, okay. that's a very impo important part of what we do. So that, that's a lead into um, um, the other program that we have and, and the types of uh, complaints we get. We, we oversee a consumer uh, hotline. Mm -hmm. sure. We have four co-ops from Northeastern uh, this semester. We they're, they're phenomenal. They are just oh, great. a great Isn't group. Isn't it a of great kids. program? Oh, yeah. it's yeah. great. And they, um, you know, they take uh, calls from nine o'clock in the morning to four thirty, quarter five in the afternoon, and they identify trends. And mm -hmm. one of the things that they focus in on is identity theft mm -hmm. and, and what types of identity thefts they're seeing. You have the, you know, the most common are the hackers. They hack into your system. Mm -hmm. Recently, my, my family, have, uh, my they picked the wrong family. guy to mess well, with. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a, I got an email from my brother who lives uh, in Europe, and he mm -hmm. said, uh, you need to change your password. It's been hacked. So uh, most people get, you know, four-digit number, uh, letter, uh, or yeah. a word that's easily associated with them. When we, we tell people to mix it up, change oh, it often. I hate password uh, selection. I know. Yeah. And unfortunately... Uh, you know, you the got, companies yeah. are lowercase, uppercase, numbers, this, and by the time Symbols, you're through, I mean, exactly. <laughs> but so the, you tattoo it on your forehead so exactly, you can remember exactly. how exactly. everybody knows. Right. Yeah. But, you know, it does give a level of protection. Yeah. You yeah. know, so um, the other thing are dumpster divers. Have you, are you familiar with dumpster yes, divers? Yes, going, okay. going right. through your recyclables. Yeah, well, just from TV kind I of weirdness. I was shredding yeah. paper all weekend long yeah. of old payroll, yep. yeah. bank statements, credit card statements, you know, because that way they're right. going to have to take a lot of glue exactly. and that exactly. I'm, I'm not as together. diligent as I should be. But, but people, you know, they'll throw up old tax returns, yep. uh, bills, and old bank statements. Old bank me. statements. And so we, we I hate paper. I tend to purge, but right. I need to shred more. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And mm -hmm. that's what we advise. At least invest in a, half. Yeah. Exactly. I, I do some of different that. Different weeks yeah. of garbage, you know. But a, a shred is probably the easiest way to get rid of it, and as yeah. you say, unless they're going to spend hours you yeah. know, trying to put together <laughs> this. Hours. Uh, the recycler uh, just took two giant garbage exactly. bags. Exactly. Years. <laughs> exactly. So, um, and then we have these skimming devices, which is uh, it's becoming very prevalent out there. Mm. We talked before the show. We, uh, our division of standards is getting calls from proprietors of gas stations uh, saying. Um, you know, we found a skimming device in. Mm. And w the, what we talked about earlier is... We just show a picture yep. of what, you're, what you mean. So apparently, I guess all gas pumps should have a seal. Exactly. And if the seal is missing... Or it compromised. Or compromised. Or it may mean that something is inside skimming and taking your information. Let me see exactly. that picture in terms of seal. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so we'll, we'll give close ups because yeah. it's hard to see. I've never noticed this. And then yep. there's the exterior mount. Or. Well, that's that's the ATM, know. but no, uh, yeah. that is the exterior of the, uh, of of, the gas of pump. It's just different, yeah. Yep. And um, they'll put the device on top of it. So there's different ways to attach the skimming device. There's a we're going to put these online so you can see. Sure. Um, but but I mean, in terms of there's the a group out of Eastern Ooh. Europe that are going around, and um, we just had a cybersecurity conference with the FBI and Secret Service, and they talked about an investigation that they had been involved with in Upper State New York. It was a mom and pop 
convenience store. They had gas pumps, and they had put these skimming devices in. It was a well-traveled area, so they mm -hmm. had thousands of from tourists all from all over. Mm. And what they did is they put this device in, and they become very sophisticated. They used to actually have to come back and retrieve the device. Mm -hmm. Now they uh, download it through Bluetooth. So they, mm. they, they leave the device that's cost of doing business. But this one particular outfit um, had put these devices in the machines, captured all the information, and retrieved it electronically, and then sent it throughout the world with a caveat, wait for a specific date and time to release the information they did, and within hours, millions of dollars were lost. So, um, so gas pumps, ATM, uh, ATM machines, we had a, um, um, a uh, entity in the South Shore that uh, recently around Christmas found that the skimming devices were on the ATM machines, and hundreds of consumers' information was compromised. Um, so we're working closely with those folks to now be the, aware of it. The credit mm -hmm. card companies do a really good job if they, they see suspicious activity. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know that the banks, if they suddenly see... Oh, they do. I do mean, they? they have a vested interest because at the end of the day, the exposure is to them. It, it can be to them. There was a thing called the chip and pin. Are you familiar with that? No. Well, if, look at you if, if you have your credit card. If, right. You, you may have the chip already. It's yes. a chip on oh, there. Oh, okay. And what's, yeah, what, what that is, it encrypts the information and it prevents them from downloading it. Um, all um, entities were required to have this up and running by last October. Mm -hmm. um, and what that does is if they have it in place, it shifts the liability of exposure to the banks. If they don't, the entity's on the hook for reimbursing the consumer. Okay. Um, ah. so, so are debit cards safe or are they not as safe as credit cards? Well, it, if, you know, I mean, if they, it's, it can be the same thing. If, uh, I have a, a debit card, but it has a chip and pin. So right. uh, most so you, banks so have converted over to that. The chip's yeah. got to be there, and then you have to put in your pin. Well, the pin, yeah. but I, I, Now, you know. I heard something, and I was actually surprised but one of the safest is like when you go into Starbucks and you use your smartphone. Okay. Because apparently each and every use, an individual algorithm is produced to then yep. transmit the information. Yep. So it's one of the safest ways. So you know, yeah. to, to and transact. The, and, and I don't, you know, yeah. I don't know your opinion on that. Well, that's similar to the chip and pin. Yeah. You know, oh. and so. Um, I mean, there are ways to get around it, and so and they'll figure it out you know, eventually. Right. You know, yeah. the, the safest way is to use cash. No, <laughs> you know, yeah. right? And, and get rid of your computers and you right. know, and just um, put the money under your mattress. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, like we live in a our great grandparents did. <laughs> but our information is everywhere. You know, oh it's right. um, you know. So before we started the show, I ha I know of three oh, right. instances, um, two boards I sit on, and then my own business. Yep where it wasn't necessarily that the email of the president or CEO was hacked, but it was co-opted in such a way that, it, that the controller thought they were getting an email from the right person mm -hmm. in authority yep. demanding a wire transfer occur right away for something urgent that was happening. Right. Mm -hmm. And because I, I have a very smart controller, yeah. she Ooh, called me and said, Connie, why are you asking me for this? Right. As opposed to emailing me back, because yeah. she had done an email back and got a reply back right. from me. Right, right. But that email, even though it looked like my email, it was a masked email that appeared as my address, but it was actually... Right. So the bad guy was, get, was emailing with her. her. They, they, but, they but, compromised but you. My controller called me and said, you know, you don't right. do this. Why, do you, why are you asking for this? Can you give me some clarification? Do you have documentation? Right which is the right thing to do. Exactly. But my two nonprofits, the controllers felt the pressure. It was yep. very urgent right. and, yep. and something critical. And and it happened to be days when the CEOs weren't in the office or yep. unavailable. And so but, they you know, wire transfer. As we discussed earlier, at the end of the day, I don't think the CEO or president is going to you know, mind if you mind just if you take push the added back and ask a question. Yeah. You know, and, but it's getting the word out that so this I'm is a, going I, on. So I, I, one of my dirty little secrets. Sorry, I'm a Sarbanes Oxley expert, okay. and I do a lot about how to evaluate risk and yep. key controls, 
and um, you know policies and procedures. And in each instance, there was another process that should have occurred, mm -hmm. but because of the emotional pressure, yep. Yep. they it was you right. know yeah. circumnavigated. You can certain personalities and, and, will respond right. to and the boss. Yeah. So I've tried to institute, particularly with my team, because yep. we act as controllers and right. CFOs, that if you ever get anything like this, oh by the way, yeah. you do not you know, supersede protocol. Yep. You follow protocol to the T no matter what the yep. person is saying. So I'm sorry, you need to either text me, call me, or otherwise right. communicate because this is not how we right. process. Exactly. Well, this mm -hmm. is a wonderful heads up to small businesses in yeah. particular who may not be, you know, Aware as astute about yep. some of that. Oh, the Large businesses calls. as well. Oh, okay. But yeah, I mean, because anybody, and you said, it, it, as we talked earlier, that some of these scams, the boss is you know, in the scam is yep. reaching out to lower level exactly. accounting, yep. you know, processors, payable folks and whatnot. Absolutely. So the pressure can be, feel real. Yeah, absolutely. In a busy but office. We've even had in the state the quote unquote IRS scam call. Well, that, oh, yeah. that is okay. so common and it's been around for years and you would think that no one's buying into it. Right. Um, we've had employees, I recently, uh, I think I'm I the only one in the last year. Land, I, I, have a, I have a landline, mm -hmm. um, probably the only one in town who has a landline well, left, yeah. but I get a call on the voicemail, this is the Internal Revenue Service, um, you're a subject of a criminal investigation, yeah. for ta uh, tax fraud, you need to call this number. Well, there's a group operating out of Washington, and they're, um, and, and they're very persistent. Mm -hmm. um, so. Of course, I called him back and I said, "Yeah, I, I, I received this phone call." I said, mm -hmm. so, let "You're me not naive. You're, you're trying to investigate, oh, right? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. 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 Let's learn more." And, and, and then they turned around and said, "Well, we'll take you up the do not call. Uh, we'll put yeah. you on the do not call list." And I said, "Well, we oversee that as well, you know." Ooh, so, um, yeah. but um, but at the end of the day, there are folks out there who get nervous, especially the elderly, and they say, "Oh sure. my God, I, I've got to do up, this." Yeah, Authority first off, the Internal right. Revenue Service does not reach out to you by phone right, you know right. that's mm -hmm. not how they operate and when in doubt going back to what you, the example you gave a moment ago if you are nervous then reach out to the internal revenue yeah, hang service. up and make the call like the exactly. not, call. To that yeah, not to that number call. Exactly. you can yeah. look up the internal revenue right. the call end, them yeah, in the end it's hard to mass. get a live person exactly. <laughs> but persevere, right, persevere and you'll hear the, yeah. yeah you know but uh, trust me this has been going on for years and unfortunately people are still being victimized oh. by it we also have the grandparent scam are you familiar with that not by that what name. they'll do is they'll um, go online it's so much of your personal information is on Facebook they'll find out that your daughter or your grandchildren is studying abroad <sighs> and they will call you and say listen your, your child or your granddaughter has been detained they you need, need to wire five thousand dollars to for, uh, for bond money ASAP they'll do that and I then mean. find out that uh, recently the uh, the undersecretary's uh, in-law was a victim of the scam mm. um, and wired uh, a good sum of money and it was all for not all the oh god well and, and that's where the just a moment. Um, I need to speak with my child. Yeah. Right. They're right. being detained. Well, just a moment. Right. Put her right. on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. right. Um, the one thing that a lot of people, if you're f familiar with the one ring scam, nope. You all these crooked. Right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what, 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 what they'll do is they will call your cell phone, generally your cell okay. phone. Okay. They'll let it ring once and they'll hang up. Mm -hmm. um, and so even if you're, you know, prone yeah. to pick up right away, you miss it. And so, like everyone, who's this calling? I right, don't recognize right. this number, so they call back. It's a group operating out of the Caribbean. And what they mm. do is they keep you on the line. And the longer they keep you on the line, the more they run up uh, a bill. Um, I'm not sure how it all works, it, the intricacies, like our, but. See, I'm so a phone snob. So I don't answer like any calls those, that I don't recognize. Uh, so what it is, is it's a number that you pay the tolls yes, on, yep. and they're making the money exactly. off of yep. you calling them back. Exactly. It's one of those toll numbers yep. where you pay money to call. Yep. Exactly. So, I hate talking uh, the 900 anyway. numbers. Right. So I don't even, you know, nowadays, I mean, with all the texting and posting and whatever, I'd rather, rather do that or just communicate. So but I don't, I don't, I don't like the, the number. If I don't know the number, I, I don't call them back. And right, I, right. I have no and curiosity to yeah. call yeah. back and find yep. out. Right. Either if you know me, you know how to reach me. Right. If exactly. you don't, exactly. good luck. Yep. <laughs> And so there are, these are types of scams that our students are commonly coming across. Yeah. The fake lottery scam that's been out there for years. 
They come oh, in, right. they say you've won the lottery, sure. but you pay the taxes. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those and, are, yeah I've know, had that. I've laughed. Pay this money yeah, first. Right. right. And the Boston Click. Globe did a, a, an article last, maybe a few months ago about a group that had been victim of the scam. And this one particular guy um, had gotten three notices that he had won three separate lotteries. And then he got a fourth notice from a company that said, listen, uh, by law, you can't collect on uh, more than one lottery any given year unless you join the association. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> he spent hundreds of thousands of dollars, um, oh. and um, it's all for naught, you know. Well, we are winding down sure. to oh, our close. This has been fascinating well, and scary, you. so yeah, thank you exactly. very much. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just, but I mean, we need to say that our, our fearless third person, Darlene, is oh, not right. here, today. here today. Yeah. She's working over at Town Hall on some important you stuff. Have, you have some consumer hotline numbers that we, we'll get on the yeah, show. Sure. We'll and we'll get these pictures and yep. the pictures up. Yeah, and that would be yeah, great. And just uh, the main thing we advise consumers is common sense. You know, when in doubt, question it, you know, whether or not it be an email or a phone call, um, utilize common sen sense and it'll go a long way. Yeah. You know, yeah. So. Wow. But uh, I, I appreciate you having me. Well, Thank thanks you. for coming out it's here and getting yeah. the word out to yeah. us. Welcome well, to Hopkinton. Well, it's been nice, yeah. Yeah. nice to meet you. Have you been here and before? Thank you to our the Boston Marathon. Oh, of course. There you go. So. There you go. Yeah. Well, you, thank you very much. Well, thanks, thanks for, being for having here. me. And thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. I'm Dr. Susan Hardy. I'm Dr. Brenda King. Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of dementia, a condition that robs patients of memory and impairs their judgment and ability to understand and communicate. More than 5 million Americans are currently affected, with most of those over 65 years old. But the number of patients with the disease is increasing as our population is aging. While the effects of Alzheimer's on patients are cruel and tragic, the disease also takes an enormous physical and emotional toll on family and friends who act as caregivers. A caregiver's burden can take people by surprise and seem overwhelming. The stress and strain can begin early and it's important to find and use available resources. So if you are or will be caring for someone with Alzheimer's, act promptly to get help. To learn more, visit the Caregiver Center of the Alzheimer's Association. My name is Louise Coleman. I'm with Greyhound Friends on Saddle Hill Road in Hopkinton. We uh, have an adoption kennel here and we have greyhounds, but we also have started having hounds and hound crosses and beagles. We're always here, seven days a week, nine to five. Our website is greyhound.org and our phone number is 508-435-5969. So uh, we're open to the public all the time. Just uh, give it a